Okay, this is the first video for Patty, our little plugin for Lightroom that allows us to map sliders and all kinds of things to keys and mouse and MIDI. Um, I decided to do this as a video, um, which I've never done before, so this is going to be interesting, um, because I just don't have the time to write it up and I could set up my little webcam here relatively quickly, um, although this is uh, on the kitchen table. Uh, I finally yesterday got my uh, Behringer BCF 2000 MIDI controller. Uh, as you can see, this has eight sliders here, a bunch of uh, turnstile buttons up here, which I believe are enco uh, called encoder in MIDI speak, and a whole bunch of buttons, which we also will program uh, here. Uh, so uh, the pictures, by the way, that you will see are rather mundane pictures that my son took on a visit to the zoo. Uh, I don't have many artsy pictures, and this seems to be the easiest way to quickly get this done. So. Uh, let's just see quickly what uh, what what Patty can do here with MIDI, and then walk you through a little bit of how to set it up because it uh, turns out it's not as simple as I hoped it would be. However, once it's set up, you can do funny things like this. This slider here is mapped to exposure. Move it up, exposure goes up. Move it down, exposure goes down. If it's as extreme as this, you made a mistake. Push a button, slider moves to the middle. Patty reset um, in Lightroom. Um, I have now, uh, right now, um, set this one here to temperature, and I'm just going to go some extreme settings here. Um, uh, uh, here we have black somewhere here, I believe. Yeah, there you go. So um, my picture got a little uh, out of hand. I push a button back here, which I set to reset all. Everything's reset. If I move uh, to the next picture here, my sliders move, which you didn't see because I guess I didn't set much here. Um, but uh, maybe you saw that uh, as. Uh, as I move around, the sliders actually adapt as I change pictures in Lightroom. Let's see whether we can make this a bit extreme. So for this one here, let's put the vibrant, push the vibrance up a bit, the clarity up a bit. Not that this is a beautiful picture at this point. Um, I've mapped uh, this set up here to uh, sharpness, so I turn this. Um, you can see my sharpening goes up, and again, I'm going to do this extreme here, just so we can see what's happening. Radius. Um, not that I use it that much, to be quite honest. Um, you can see the little lights uh, go back and forth, uh, so, so go with the setting, uh, equivalent to a slider setting. Um, so I change picture, my sliders adjust. What the next picture go shows, if I go back, the sliders adjust back. So this is ultimately what we want to have. Um, I can, by the way, reset this one here just by pushing on it. Resets automatically in uh, Lightroom as well as on um, our little uh, uh, MIDI setup. Um, all these buttons we can program to normal functions like uh, we did in um, like we did in uh, Paddy normally. Uh, and I have, for instance, programmed this button here for next picture, this button for last picture. So this works all perfectly fine. There uh, you can see the history updates. The history doesn't update immediately. And if you take a look here, uh, I move up exposure, for instance, um, and we have a couple of seconds delay, like we have in Paddy. So if I go down here, I go up again, change it, have some fun, whatever it is, and obviously, again, extreme. It takes about, um, I think I set it to two and a half seconds, I'll show you in a second where, you, where, where we can set this up, um, until Patty uh, updates Lightroom. So, whole point being that we don't have immediate updates, we don't uh, we, we don't put too much garbage in the history there, which, which tends to be a problem with these kinds of programs. Uh, uh, what else? So let me show you how we can set this up in Paddy in our normal uh, menu down here. Uh, you have I have more menu options here than you will have in the uh, uh, EXA option because I run the script, not the compiled version here. Um, I go to Assign Keys, MIDI Sliders, and this is our little menu for it. We have to define the MIDI in and the MIDI out port. When you buy something like uh, the Behringer here, uh, which you can spend about $100 on eBay or Craigslist or something like that. Um, it comes with a uh, uh, manual, you have to download a driver. If you download the driver, you kick it in, you start the bearing, and before you start Patty, it will just show up here. It will just hopefully work. Um, I always pick channel one. Um, Media apparently has an enormous uh, you know, number of channels here, 16 channels. The MIDI in is the MIDI out. I use MIDI in and MIDI out. This is just a debug mode that uh, I'm not using at this point and, and it will vanish in, in later versions of Patty. And each of these controls can be assigned, um, and you have to look through the manual uh, of your MIDI controller, 227 uh, control channel outputs. So these are the so-called CCs, the control channel outputs. So for instance, you can see my slider one here, 
which is this slider. This uh, gives me uh, channel 1, CC, uh, controller 1 is mapped in PADI to a temperature. It's that simple. We have these map sliders to MIDI. 2 is mapped to this, 3 is mapped to recovery, etc. Uh, the buttons down here, for instance, I called 127, 126, just for fun, to be honest, to see whether it works. 127 is next picture, 126 is previous picture, just like you map any other key. Um, and this is really it. Um, it's uh, to a certain extent that simple. Um, for starters, it gives us 127 of these opportunities. Um, we can imagine, you know, maybe we find a way later to even use in more channels and have several MIDI settings. And going can go crazy, quite frankly, right now. I have an X keys. I'm, I'm not quite sure what I would do with another more sliders or more channels, but uh, you never know. Right now my setup is this and the mouse on the right hand and um, my X keys on the left hand so I can actually uh, sort of work dual handed. And that's just, this is really, it works really well um, for the time being. Input, output, reset, sliders move. One thing I notice, and I'm going to show this again on the exposure slider, um, but it's the same issue with every, every other slider. The range is rather large, so um, if I go all the way up, uh, we go to plus four, um, doesn't quite get there, there seems to be a little bug uh, that, that I have to work out. All the way down it goes to minus four, that apparently works. Um, and, and sort of in the middle where most of us are going to work, it's, we only use half of the slider. So what I did is I, uh, let's put this to sort of plus one here. What I did is I mapped a new function that is the MIDI sensitivity. I'm going to push this button. Paddy gives us the high sensitive mode, and now this, all the sliders are set to half the range. So this slider now goes from plus 2 to minus 2. And this gives me a much more sensitivity where I need it here in the middle when I want to play around with it. And the same is true for the temperature. Um, just to show a, another extreme here, the temperature slider now goes up to about 10,000 or so, down to about 3,000. Hard, hard to imagine that you need a lot more. If you need more, you change your sensitivity here, the MIDI normal sensitivity, you see the slider moved, and now it can go all the way up to some really, really hot uh, temperatures. Let me reset this, go back to the high sensitive mode, and again, um, just to give another example, uh, here's our black slider, it goes up to um, half the range here in this setting. This works for all the sliders that Patty has, let me reset this, this works for all the sliders that Patty has um, in the MIDI functions. A um, bunch of other things to note, um, I actually mapped several encoder groups here. My first encoder group, as I showed you, was the sharpening. I just can switch over to a second encoder group, which is my um, uh, post-crop vignetting. Uh, and again, not the most beautiful picture here, but it will you know, show what we want to do. You can see the little lights here are set up a bit differently, which I, which I did just for fun. Let me see whether I can do this. So you can see, as I move around, it's just a light that moves around. Um, in the other encoder setting, we had the whole bar moving around. Um, and as I switch back, um, the other uh, uh, styles actually retain. So for instance, um, uh, just to show what, what I mean by that, let's say I move the sharpness here up to some ridiculous amount. You can actually see it nicely moving here. And uh, in, uh, in, uh, this is 75 because it's limited um, through our sensitivity here. Uh, I change, you can see the lights change, um, let's say I change the sharpening here, down because I realized it was a mistake, I changed it here in Lightroom, um, I switch my encoder group back, um, and you can see the lights change, so my uh, my control actually picked up, although it wasn't on, it picked up that I changed things. This works for all these encoder groups, um, because de facto these four are really, um, four, uh, these eight are four times eight. It doesn't quite work for the sliders and what's called the preset on the bearing. Uh, that, that requires another video. Um, I have uh, uh, some ideas on how to, how to deal with that. Um, at the moment, I actually have a function um, that, uh, that if, if in case we change a preset here, you can see the sliders move. Um, if I change back, um, let's change something again to the ridiculous here. Um, if I change my preset back, uh, my exposure slider actually does not reflect the new setting, and I just quick have a quick uh, push of a button that should synchronize my sliders, um, which it didn't do because I was in the wrong mode, I guess. So let's try this again. Changing something here. Oops. Change our preset first here. Go to the preset. Change something here. Somewhere at the, at the lower end of our, of our uh, sensitivity mode. Um, 
and you can see my slide didn't pick it up if I push this button it picked it up. This is just a simple update button. We'll work on that um, sooner or later we figure out how it works but right now I'm very excited because um, the whole idea that as I'm moving in Lightroom something physical moves somewhere else I find extremely exciting. Um, uh, you know it is 0.9.8 uh, it only has a little few bugs in there we're working on it. Um, looking forward to working with all you um, on, on everything and ultimately I do want to work on mapping all these cool things in HSL um, uh, and also all the uh, sliders up here and some other controls such that we can actually turn you know um, ad address the sliders using these uh, or indeed up here because this is eight times four thirty two of so these little turning buttons that also have their own reset which is kind of cool so uh, I'm sure we all find uh, some cool uses for it. So uh, lots of headroom uh, that we can play with. In the meantime, I'm very excited that this works. Um, and let's see what comes out of this uh, first video that I've ever done.